Hey, Peppin. Yo, 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 yo. Would I lie to you? Uh, I mean, probably. I mean, actually, probably not. Or maybe. Hmm. It's a good question. I mean, it depends if it was about, like, Susan Summers. If it was about Susan Summers, potentially. You mentioned Susan Summers a hell of a lot on this show. I don't even know who that is. Are- Susan Summers? Yeah. I, I believe she's a person who's like, you know, like that person on, uh, what's that game where they like spin the wheel, wheel of fortune, right? So she like does the little like, uh, isn't that Vanna she, White? She, 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 she makes the letters. Oh shit. <laughs> the fuck is Susan Summers? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's this game show. Speaking of game shows that, uh, is British only. It's called Would I Lie to You? And uh, I I would think that would be a really good game to play. Okay. Uh, so, so, wait, are you going to lie to me? Um, am I? We need to talk. I probably should have called it after the Susan Summers thing, but it didn't talk about <laughs> anything to do with the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Susan Summers? <laughs> you Googling it? Yes. <laughs> There's Suzanne Somers. <laughs> Who's a 74-year-old person from Step by Step, Three's Company, American Graffiti? Maybe that's where I get the name from. <laughs> I don't know. Susan Summers, our best character on the show. <laughs> I really thought she was the person that did the... Vanna White is her name, it not, is not White. Susan Summers. <laughs> I've been thinking the whole time that was Susan Summers. Then who's Vanna White? <laughs> She was on Step and by Step just, in American Graffiti. Yeah. As soon as it's Van and White, I'm like, shit. I've been wrong this whole time. I've been wrong for so long about Susan Summers. <laughs> and I know that whoever's listening is like, Susan Summers, you know who Susan Summers is? <laughs> Someone's like, that was my first grade teacher. How did they know Susan? How did they know Miss Summers? <laughs> Welcome back. So glad you guys could join us. I am here once again with my best friend, Nathan Pepin. How's it going today, Pepin? Yo, yo, I am doing well. How about yourself, Meter? I'm doing great, thanks so much. So we have uh, something special here today. Um, It's called, it's a game that is played in Britain um, with two really, really funny um, uh, comedians in, in the UK. Uh, David Mitchell and Lee Majors, um, and they each have team have a team of two, so there's three total. They have two people on on their team, and somebody reads a statement off of a card, and the other team gets to ask questions, and then after a little bit of time, they have to decide: is that a true thing or is that a lie? And they mm. the the catch is that at the beginning of the show, before the show goes on air or anything, everybody writes down, like, a, a thing that's happened to them that's really outrageous. Like, one guy had, like, uh, I once bought a um, a counterfeit horse or something like that. And it was, like, a legit thing that happened to him. But there's also the show writers will write a bunch of lies, like, fake things that ha- that could have happened to somebody and they don't know what they're reading until they flip the card for the first time. So if it's mm-hmm. a lie, it's something they've never read before, and they have to try and like pass it off as if it's a true thing. Um, so it's a lot of fun, mm-hmm. and it really makes you question like what's true and what's not true, because sometimes the thing is, the thing is so outrageous, there's no way it's made up, but it's so outrageous, there's no fucking way it's true. So it's like, what, mm-hmm. what even? <laughs> Which is really, really hmm. fun. And I suppose a big part of the game, too, is the body language and the person concealing, like, what they're saying, right? Because, like, you can't, if you look at one, you can't, like, pretend, like, you can't be like, oh, how do I sell this? Because that's going to give away that, you know, it's it's a lie. But if it's, like, something, if you kind of conceal that and also tell the lie well enough, then I guess that's where it's tough. Unless you start like metagaming and you're like act surprised, but you're really not surprised and because it's the truth or whatever. But hmm, okay. Uh, so, how, how much uh, do you, w- when you watch a show, how much of it is them guessing from the body language and how much is them just guessing from their knowledge of the person? Uh, they they guess based on asking questions usually. It's not, there's not much with the body language related type stuff um, that, that people use. 
you know, they're behind they're behind desks. Uh, they have like a it's a panel show, so they have uh, giant desks, three person desks mm-hmm. on either side. So there's not a ton of like the body language and stuff. There are some guests that come on and, and will try and like pick apart body language, but it's also hard because a lot of times it's people that you don't necessarily know very well. So it's hard to like judge their body language based on something that they may not know how their body language normally is. Hmm. Hmm. Right, right. Yeah, because I guess it's a lot different with the strangers as well. Yeah. So what I've done is I went through and I uh, put together, I wrote down some truths that I think would be interesting for this show um, that I think are just, they're either unbelievable or interesting or um, like just on the fringe of being believable where it it has enough doubt to make you cast doubt and I wrote down 65 truths and then I went online and I pulled from a list of um, like two truths and a lie um, popular lies to tell because people are uncreative and can't think of a a simple lie themselves and I pulled 60 Mm -hmm. lies so these are things that I just mm. pulled from a list. So I I haven't seen them before. Um, now, to be fair, I played this game once with my buddies, and we did 12 rounds. So there are a couple of, tr- of lies in there that I have seen before. Um, but mm-hmm. for the majority, the, whatever, 80% of them I've never seen. So if I, I'm going to use a random picker, I'm going to put them all in the random picker, Whatever it spits out is what I'm going to read, and then I need to pass it off as if it's true or a lie. I I am trying to fool you. Mm-hmm. So let's say you're telling the truth. Uh, with the truth, if I ask you a question, you have to be truthful with the answer. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. And obviously, if it's a lie, then you're going to be lying yes. the whole way through. Now, in theory, if it's true, I can tell the truth but kind of be vague as if I... Like, I'm not going to try and be super deceptive to the point where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, uh, you know, uh, I've I'm I'm holding a, a bottle of Poland Spring, right? I've never drank a bottle of Poland Spring before. That's true because technically the whole bottle's not gone. Like, I'm not going to catch you on stupid technicalities. A lie isn't going to be mm-hmm. 99% true and one tiny thing was tweaked. It will either be a whole truth or a whole lie. Unless for some reason right, right. the random thing that is in the thing happens to be something true. <laughs> that I, I have no way of screening for that without ruining the game. That, that'd be interesting. To add another layer, because I think that the this game is really fun, but I'm also playing against my best friend. So some of these you're just going to know because you were probably fucking there. So to add another uh-huh. layer... I asked Nick Stewart, one of our really good friends who knows me very, very well, to to write 15 lies for me that he knows aren't true, but sound like there's something that would be true. So on mm-hmm. top of me put, having my own truths in there and random, tr- random fakes from the internet, there are also 15 landmine possible truths or, or total lies that sound like meter truths. Hmm. Hmm. All right. All right. That'll be interesting. And either Nick Stewart's are going to be super, super good, or they're going to be like way out there and about like, uh, I don't know, an, an elephant riding a rainbow. It. I mean, it's possible, but I think the, the point was I told him to write stuff that mm-hmm. he could see being true about me. And if somebody who did that, who was playing this and knew me well, heard that, they'd be like, yeah, that sounds like meter. So the whole point is mm-hmm. going to be to try and trick you specifically with those. Okay. So those are Nick Stewart points. <laughs> okay. Okay. If that was, hmm, that can be tricky. And right. that's the point, right? Because otherwise it might be pretty easy to be like random shit from the internet versus like truths about me. Now there's that mm-hmm. little bit of weirdness thrown in there. All right. All right. I am ready. All right. You can ask as many questions as you want. If it drags on too long and you're like not really getting in, getting anywhere, I'll probably just ask you to make a decision so we can move forward mm-hmm. and do a couple of these. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's there's no real time limit. 
All right. Yeah, I'll try to keep it to like three to five questions. Yeah. J- just to make it interesting, and I'll try to do like my deductions that way. I think I think the deductions will be very entertaining. Yeah, and like hearing your thought process on why you're choosing truth or lie at the end, I think will be super interesting. All right, and uh, I encourage everyone to play along at home. Uh, I will pause after Nate gives his that you can shout out your answer and let us know in the comments or uh, in on Discord afterwards how many of these you got right. Did anybody get perfect? Did anybody get literally none? Uh, I think that'll be super interesting. So here's the first one. I once tried to do the milk challenge with chocolate whole milk. Oh, that was it? Yep. Uh, so you once did the milk challenge with chocolate whole milk. So the milk challenge is the challenge where essentially you try to drink a whole gallon of milk without uh, puking or something. Is that right? Uh, in one hour, yes. In, in one hour, okay. Because I remember that was a thing that people were doing back in the day. So I th- I'm i going to do a little bit of reasoning here first because I'm, I'm leaning towards true right now, but it's got to get it kind of strewn out because I think this is true but I remember back in the day everyone at school was doing the milk challenge and uh, I think you were part of the group I mean I think you're off to the side of the group but you're kind of a part of that same similar group that was doing it and I think you chose to do it and I think you were trying to make it interesting I'm not sure if we recorded it because I know you're doing a bunch of recordings with the meat and dryness uh, YouTube channel at the time so I feel like you actually may have recorded something for that for it. Cause I, I feel like I saw a recording of uh, one person now, uh, John, who did it, uh, or maybe it was Keith, uh, John or Keith. I, I think you guys did that behind your house. We did. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is gonna be true, but the whole, I, I think it's true that you did the milk challenge. The chocolate side, I'm uncertain about, but I think you may have done that for added publicity with the YouTube video. So I'm gonna say true. Without any questions. We did do the the milk challenge behind my house. That was um, Keith, Jeremy, and George, and uh, Nick McCrossin was there as well. And he did the he did the Coke challenge where he drinks one can of Coke and tries not to throw up, and he ended up throwing up. It was literally just him making himself throw up, and it was really fucking funny. He's like, "I'm doing the Coke challenge," and then like vomit. It was wicked funny. Um, so your official guess is true. I think so. Well, I don't. I'm trying to think of questions I could ask. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I guess I could ask questions like, "Was that okay?" Uh, was you can ask anything. Can ask, you can be like, "What were the circumstances of when you did this?" You think it was a meteor and Gelinus thing? You can ask, "Was this a meteor and Gelinus thing?" Okay, I'll ask, "Was this during high school?" Yes. Okay, so my, my answer is true then. And I mean, you, you said you gave me your whole reasoning, so all I have to do is agree with your reasoning if it's a lie, and I'm gonna win, right? <laughs> uh, what were you saying if you if you're lying? Wait, so because yeah, like let's say let's say I'm lying. You just said you believe these were the circumstances, and then you're like, were those the circumstances? If I'm lying and I say yes, that's a self fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> ah, that's right. So you may not want to give me your whole reasoning up front. <laughs> give it at the end once you've asked all my que- all the questions. Give it the end. Okay, so I see. So you got to be able to get a detective. That was a very, very smart reasoning. Um, you've guessed yes. I'm just going to walk that in. Yep. And uh, er- anybody else guessing? And yes, that was true. Uh, and you, everything you said is 100%. We did that behind the house. I didn't do that because I had already done it. We did record it for Meter and Gelinus, but it never got released because the, um, the final recording of me actually like getting sick got screwed up uh i handed the phone off to somebody to record or i think it was like a camera attached to a laptop and um i had already hit record and then they were trying to help and hit record and it stopped the recording so we ended up not getting anything which is unfortunate but i got two half gallons of chocolate milk because i don't really like milk so i'm like i can drink chocolate milk though not realizing that chocolate whole milk is the worst possible thing you can do the milk challenge with. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I ended up getting getting sick for sure. But I think I got like three quarters of the way through, which is usually right where the wall is. is that's where it gets hmm. hard. Hmm. 
Yeah, I remember, uh, I think I saw Keith's video, and Keith yep. was doing like really well. And mm -hmm. Keith's kind of a bigger guy in general, so you kind of think he would do well. And he was doing so good, and then it's just like he got to that point, it's just like... Ugh. Yeah, and all three of them got sick. Yeah, And Nick yeah. McGrossin with the Coke Challenge. <laughs> 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 that is on meter in July still, I think. Yeah, that that McCrossin thing is very jackass esque. <laughs> it's also very McCrossin. <laughs> yeah. That guy is hilarious. I haven't seen him so long. I got to see him sometime. I I I fully agree. We got to get him on. Have him do some impressions. He does impression videos on YouTube. Uh, highly suggest check him out. Uh, um, his Joker impressions are literally the best Joker impressions on the internet. But anyway, uh, let's do another one. You got one point, Nate. The end. You're gonna be able to cash in these points for something. Ooh. I don't know what yet. All right, and the winner is. I studied three languages, but can't speak any of them. Uh, what were the languages? Spanish, French, and Japanese. Uh, why would you study Japanese? Uh, it, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird to, like, phrase it as studied because it was back in, like, grade school. I... It, it, do you remember JJ? Probably not. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, it was a kid I went to went to grade school with, and we hung out all the time. And his dad had like a dojo, and for whatever reason, they learned how to count in Japanese. So I learned Japanese like phrases and how to count and stuff in that regard. And the same okay. thing for French. Uh, so, so it wasn't like. You weren't at all conversational, even like say Spanish, like one conversational, like like let's say you had an introductory course, it wouldn't be anywhere near that competency. Um, no, not like full course competency. No, it was like um simple, like super simple stuff. But I could probably like go into a dojo and get trained. It was like really, really low key stuff. Okay. Uh, and where did you learn the Spanish from? Well, that was just high school. Just, okay, so high school Spanish? Yeah, I took Spanish 1 and 2, and I think I got A's in both, but I don't remember, like, hardly any of it. I'm definitely not fluent. Okay. Can you remember anybody in your Spanish class? Weren't you in one of them? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jamie Goff? <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, okay, that, that's good enough. So I know you're not lying about the Spanish because I was there for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm done with questions here. Uh, the see, this is where it's gonna be a little bit tough because the uh, the JJ one, and also I know JJ. I lived with them for like two years. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Do you know JJ? No, you don't know him. You're like, ah. Uh... <laughs> you mean that guy I lived with? <laughs> That's you're really the one who got funny. me to live with them. You, you don't. That's you're so the matchmaker. I know. I also. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. That's so funny. Uh, actually, let me ask you a question. The dojo was this at his house or was this somewhere else? I don't know because I didn't go to like the dojo. I just knew that was like oh, a okay. thing. Okay. Uh because that seems plausible to me. Well, the only reason why it's, this is going to sound kind of weird, but uh, JJ had a like a half pipe in his, uh, on his, on his like, uh, what do you call it, his yard. He had it somewhere on his premise. So he had a half pipe, and if he has a half pipe, then the whole like dojo thing becomes very, very plausible in my mind. Uh, <laughs> why, why are those two things so heavily correlated? I mean, like, if you have a half pipe in your heart yard, that's kind of strange, right? So it's, you know, I can see, like, another thing being, like, a dojo, right? I mean, it uh -huh. makes perfect sense. Okay. So that seems plausible there. Uh, the one thing that I'm not certain about is the Japanese, because it sounds like it's potentially plausible, but, the, see, the explanation is so, like, just drawing to the point. That's, that's what makes me think it's probably true, mm -hmm. but... It's like, I was expecting more of an answer like anime and stuff. But then again, anime would be like the obvious answer. Like, oh yeah, I watched anime and I got kind of into it. So I was trying to learn Japanese. That way I could watch it, you know, in pure subs without any subtitles. 
like, uh-huh. like that would be the thing. But then that would be, I think, a bit too much because I don't think that's something you would do, but rather it'd be something more like, oh, let's learn the alphabet. Let's learn like one, two, three. Yay. Uh-huh. Especially as a kid. So I'm going to go with true. Uh, yes. This is this is true. Um, I, I mean, everything everything I said is, is true in that regard. Um, wow. And so I, I could count to like 10. E, I don't remember any of it now. Uh, each knee, son, I don't know. And then oh, yeah. in... I- in French, I could. Uh, I had to learn that for fifth grade. We were studying like Canada or something. Uh, so, hmm. une, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. And we learned like simple phrases, but I don't remember any of it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See, I was testing you on that one a little bit because it's like my, my banking was that you would be truthful with the Spanish story. But because because yeah. if it was true, you have to be truthful with the Spanish story. So if I know that's I true, mean, then... you were in the class with me. <laughs> yes, yes. The whole the, you, do you know JJ? That's really <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was, for, at first, I was confused. I'm like, oh, this must be a different. No, it's not. It's not a different JJ. <laughs> it's the same JJ. All right. I'm really good at yo-yo. Uh, you talk about make the second? Just in general. I'm really good at the yo-yo. Like it's a skill I've picked up. Okay. So, hypothetically, if you had a yo-yo right now, yep. could you walk the dog? Uh, obviously. That's like base level stuff. How about, how about rock the cradle? Uh-huh. That's like... And then... It's hard. I'm holding this stupid thing. So you have to like uh-huh. do that like down and then flip over and turn your hands out and then like you yep. push the thing like that to keep it going mm-hmm. and then you can whoosh, undo it all okay and and around the world is that is that something i mean, I mean around not, the world then there's like the not really that's like that's like little kids just like whipping the thing around to do around the world i mean technically yes it is but that's again that's like walk the dog it's so basic that's even more basic than walk the dog it's just you whip the thing around like Okay, uh, give me three tricks that you can do besides those. I mean, those are the those are the big ones. I can do... Okay, um, so that's a no then. I can do... Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Jesus, you're aggressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're yelling at me. That's a no. <laughs> Jesus, I'm so scared. <laughs> Um, do you remember in um, sixth grade, Hacky Sack Hall? Mm-hmm. That was Yo Yo Hall. Hacky Sack, no. Oh, there was a in right in the like cafeteria when you come off the bus and stuff, and before you go on the bus, we'd all be like in the cafeteria area, and there was this little mm-hmm. hall that went out to the back door. Yeah, and we'd all play Hacky Sack in there. Before that was Hacky Sack I don't Hall. That. that there was Yo. It was actually called Yo Yo Hall. Because some guy came to the school with hmm. yo-yos. See, I know that part's true because I, that's kind of thought what I thought you were bringing up at first with that. Because I remember there was like a yo-yo guy that came in, mm-hmm. or was it yo-yo people? I don't know. It might have been, but people. I, remember I the, remember the yo-yo demonstration. Yeah, people loved that. And, and I also remember that there was another demonstration they did, but that's the main one. Uh-huh. Ooh, I just got a memory of like that girl singing, and then she ran off crying because she messed up. But anyway, was that, was that like the talent show? <laughs> yes. Oh wow, I don't remember that, but <laughs> I remember there was a teacher who did us who did uh, the song from The Lion King. Can you feel the love tonight? She like fucking oh, killed yeah? it. It was awesome. Hmm. Uh, the girl hmm. did jokes and everyone laughed. That was funny. Okay. Sixth grade. Uh. So I think my answer for this is no. Mm-hmm. What's your reasoning? I mean, I don't. Oh, my reasoning. Uh huh. So my reasoning is, I, well, I caught you in a trap there uh-huh. uh, because I started asking about different tricks. Yeah. And so I purposely went for all the ones that people know. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the super obvious ones. Mm-hmm. And then I tried to get you to name one, like a couple, like real quick right after that. Yeah. Because if you were super good at yo-yoing, you'd be able to name like all the other ones or too. Or if I was super good at improv. 
<laughs> well, if you're super good in improv, you failed this time. That's definitely true. Yeah, that no, that's not true. And the the thing is, like, I do know, like, I could name if I had, like, I was thinking before, like, while you were naming of other ones because I was thinking you were going to do that, and I had some in my mind, and then the second you asked, my mind went blank. So I legitimately know more <laughs> and just fucked it up. <laughs> Fucked it up on a real high level. <laughs> oh boy! And then it's coming. Like that's a no. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my god, it's so aggressive right now. I was intimidated. It might be the caffeine. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's re up. You're perfect so far. You're really good at this. Okay. You're good at trapping. I'm gonna me. fail eventually, but yeah. But here's the real question: Is Pevin actually gonna fail? Why is Pepin talking in the third person? Could it be because he's editing and he's tired and wants to go to bed? Yes. So next time on We Need to Talk, we'll see if Pepin fails or does well or if he continues to talk in the third person.